if you see over here right so it is simply asking me to enter the age of the applicant which i am going to put let's say 35 then it asks me to enter the salary of the applicant let's say i enter 90 and then it gives me the result the applicant seems to be genuine now what is it i will just explain you with the help of an example but before that let me tell you this is a predictive model which is telling you basis on the applicant's age and his salary it is predicting whether the customer is genuine or fraudster let me try to explain you with the help of example right let's say you are a fraud analyst working in a credit card company called alec cards where you get application for credit cards and you have been assigned a task to develop a model basis on the data of these two variables is and salary now the data looks something like this if you observe this particular data over here right these are the fraudulent transactions so if you observe for all these fraudulent transactions age is below 30 or equals to 30 or to some range while the salary is proportionately too high so if you see over here 28 is the age while salary is $68,000 which is quite huge isn't it for a 28 years old person earning $68,000 monthly salary could be unpractical or uncommon okay so this is the kind of pattern which this model has observed now you must be thinking what is the model that we have built i'll tell you in some time let me take you to the jupyter notebook over here and try to explain you from scratch how i came up with this particular conclusion okay so here what i'm doing is i'm just importing all the prerequisites which is importing the pandas library then numpy library and then seaborn seaborn is for the purpose of visualizing the data here is the same table which i was showing you over here this is the same table which i am importing over here and here i am showing you top five records out of that table now what i am going to do is i will just plot this data on a scatter plot and i'll show you how does it looks so to do that i can simply say sns dot scatter plot scatter plot and in that i need to supply data equals to this is the app data okay and on x axis i'm going to supply let's say salary all right salary in kpm kpm means thousand per minute right sorry per month not per minute and then on y axis i will plot the age and let's see how does it looks like okay what i'll do is i'll switch the axis there is no science behind it is just to make the visualization look better i'm just trying to do this all right now if you see this the data is quite clustered i mean condensed around this here here right so if you draw a line right from over here right so what we see is most of the points at the left side of a 35 okay that means we can say mostly the fraudsters are below 35 but here this is just the age we also need to look at this from the salary perspective so if you look at this particular area right this particular area is looking very dense right so here we can say that age is lower than 35 and the salary is increasing then that's most likely to be a fraudulent transaction okay fraudulent applicant okay you don't trust me whether this is a fraud or not so here is an option in scatter plot you can use the parameter as u u equals to i'm just going to put fraud the other variable we have fraud right now you can see over here so whatever this saffron color you see that indicates is a fraud blue is non-fraud so if you see mostly the frauds are over here so which are below the less than or equals to the age 30 and the salary is mostly greater than 65 i can say right 65 kpm so this is how we can conclude 
that this is the population who, who belongs to the fraudster group now basis on this we gonna create the model all right so but to create the model first we need to you know arrange our data so here is the data to build before we start with building a model what we need to do is we need to train the model and to uh, train the model and then test that whether that is working as per the given training or not and then we can supply the real data into that so to build a model first we need to train it train and test it so i'm going to split this data in two parts here you can see so this is the bigger portion which is 80 percent of the data i am keeping at one side and 20 percent data at another side so this 80 percent data i will call it training data and this will be called as testing data now further what i'll do is i'll split it in two more separate parts so if you see training data is also separated in two parts first part is independent set of independent variables this one is the dependent variables means this is the outcome of this independent variables right similarly in testing data set here we have independent data and here we have dependent data so again this is the outcome of these independent tables okay so we will train our model basis on this data so i will call this table as x train and this will be called as y train so whatever the result is i'm going to say that as y and whatever the independent data or input is i'm going to say that as x table because this is the training set so i am saying x train and y train over here i will say this data set as x test and this data set i will say y test now i'm going to create the same set of data in jupyter or in python and then we will create a model basis on that let me take you over there quickly so for that what we need to do is first we need to re import the required modules right so from sk learn import okay from sk learn dot model selection import train test split train test split right so this is imported what we're going to do is we're going to split our data the data which we have is application data so we need to make training data and testing data right so how can we make that so this is the application data out of that what i'm going to do is i will just um, you know pick two variables which are age and then salary let me see yeah salary and then comma app dot fraud this is my y table right this will be my y table i'm just going to enclose this in a parenthesis operator okay so this is the fraud data now we need to apply train test function on this train test function right now we need to understand the parameters if you want to understand what all are the arguments accepted in this what you can do is just press shift plus tab and here you get the details in this you can see all these parameters are available so here we also need to tell the model what is the size of test data that you want to keep right so i will say test size equals to 20 percent 0.2 is 20 percent right so you see here this data will work as training uh, i mean these are the independent set of variables and this is the dependent variables now i need to store this in train test variables okay so we can just look at the description and just right from here what i can do is i will just copy it quickly so you can also do the same there is no problem at all this the, these variables i will just copy this from here and over here what i'll do is i'll just store in these variables now there is one more parameter which is called random state random state i'm going to say false so what will happen is it will not change the data again and again if you don't specify this every time you run this model it will change the train test split okay now just let's run this now let's have a look at x train data how does it looks like right 
so you see this is the x training data set all right out of 19 we must have somewhere 15 records over here right and we can say x test data this looks like this then we can have a quick look this is x test data then we can say y train y train looks like this and we can also have a look at y test so in y test we see two frauds and two genuine records are there right so this is how we just ended up uh, splitting our data in training and test says now the next thing comes in using a model so here we are going to use the logistic regression model logistic regression right why logistic logistic model is something which gives us the result in categories either yes or no or one or zero maybe if you want to get the rating of the movies then sometime it can give you one two three four as well right you can use in that context as well right so i'll just keep the description to this point only and further i'll proceed from sk learn dot regression models i'm sorry from sk learn i need to choose sk learn dot linear models okay and i'm going to say import logistic models logistic sorry i just need to use capital logistic logistic regression all right i'm done with importing that now the next part is creating an object of this model right so i will say model equals to this logistic regression and this model is created right model is created now what we need to do is we need to fit the model okay so to fit that model dot fit this is the these are the functions or methods available for this particular object you can just hit tab and you can see all of these things which are available right so we're gonna say fit and in this we need to provide the training data right so x train and y train this is the two data sets which we need to provide over here right so i'm going to say x train comma y train the, it's not important that you give the same name you can give the name whatever you want now our model is fitted trained right all that we need to do is make the prediction of it out of it okay now let's uh, uh, say model dot predict here we're gonna say model dot predict and in that so because here on training data our model is trained now we are going to give it another set of data which is x test and we're gonna ask it to predict and tell me the result so here it is predicted here it is exactly giving you the same result right as you have in y test see first two occurrences are genuine and second two occurrences are fraud so wherever you see one that means it's a fraud all right now there is another function or method which is used to check the accuracy so we can say model dot score here and in that all that you need to do is supply the test data on which you want to do the testing so this will give you the predicted outcome while at the same time you also have the actual outcome outcome so which i'm going to put over here and then it will generate the score which you are getting 100 percent this is awesome right superb but in general it doesn't happen right see this data which we are using over here it's the biased data because i have doctored it as per the requirement so that i could explain you well in general we don't get this uh, this systematic data right now other uh, thing which we're gonna do here quickly is we gonna find the we're gonna create a interface something like this which we just did over here all right here so i'm just going to create that very quickly over here what i need to do is i just need to say def pred fraud pred fraud pred model and in that i will su supply two parameters which is age and then salary and over here i will say if and i'm just going to use this particular thing over here right if age 
comma salary these two parameters i'm supplying over here equals to one then i want to say it return fraud else you return genuine all right so this is created over here now what we need to do is we need to validate it whether this is working as per the expectation or not so how can we validate that just pass the values over here now let's supply the salary and let's see what is it oh it says fraud it worked right now the next thing is we just need to use the input boxes right please stay with the video there is some important information to let you know okay age so here i'm going to say input and i'm going to say enter the sorry please bear with me enter the age of the applicant here it will enter the age but we all know input always takes as a string right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make that as integer right and here i will say salary let's say salary is we can ask user to enter it over here and then we can print the result print the applicant the applicant seems to be seems to be whatever the outcome comes out of this all right so i'm just going to use this function over here and in this over here i'm just going to use these two variables which is age and salary let me make it small case because over there it is small case but uh, that doesn't matter but just to be on safer side i'm doing this is salary all right and then let's try to run this so here it is asking you to enter the uh, age so let's say 34 and here i'm uh, going to enter the salary which is 90 and here we got the result right it says genuine let's try to run it again so let's enter 27 and let's enter the salary 80 you you see it says fraud so this is the logistic regression now if you want me to cover the statistical technique behind the logistic regression what is the uh, statistical logic behind it and why did i choose logistic regression over here if you want me to cover that in detail your job is to put that into the comment section if you want me to uh, you know create similar video but on the large amount data unbalanced data and if you want me to cover each and every step in developing a model just let me know in the comment section and i will definitely try to create a separate video for that until then happy learning wish you very all the best